Hello everybody, Matt the Lesser here again, and we're back with episode 5 in our Terra Mystica Fan Faction Basic Strategy series. For those of you who are new, we are doing one video for each of the new fan factions for Terra Mystica, which are in the process of being beta tested on Board Game Arena. You can go play them right now. They've been out for a few months, and so it's time to start talking about what have we learned, what are some of the strategies, how do we play these factions. So these videos are really intended at people who are familiar with the game of Terra Mystica, know the rules, basic concepts, how to play the base factions, but are looking to try the new fan factions. Maybe you're looking to jump into a game on BGA, or you're looking to buy the expansion once it's out. Maybe you already have it in your hands and you just want a little guidance on how do you play each of these factions. So today we are on episode five covering the genie. Um, now, these are one of the two new yellow factions, uh, and a very cool faction, a little simpler than a couple of the ones we've covered in the most recent two episodes, so a little bit more back to basics here, um, but the genie are a very flexible, uh, very fun to play faction, so for those who are familiar, I don't do video editing, so this is going to be the no frills, one take, basic strategy overview of the genie, all right, let's go. So. Let's look at the genie's board. And the first thing you notice when you look at the board is it's mostly standard. Nice to return to a mostly standard faction board. Normal production for the most part, normal costs uh, of buildings, only exception being that their stronghold here only costs three workers instead of four. Both a cheap stronghold and sanctuary at only six coins. So bottom left section of the board, pretty basic. Uh, they are a 5-7 faction, you'll notice here. Um, when you get to the, uh, in terms of starting power, 5 and 7, when you get to the upper right um, is where you first start to see a little bit of what the genie are all about. You see a couple things that are different. Number one is you see that their starting cult steps are wild cards. Um, and what this means is that at the beginning of the game, you actually get to choose two steps on any one cult. You cannot split them up, but two steps on any one cult, which will... 99% of the time be whatever that round one cult reward is, um, and you get to go up on that. So the genie gets to orient themselves to the game board in a slightly more flexible way than any other faction. And then uh, you see these three lamp icons, um, and these have to do with the genie's book ability. So the genie get three lamps, and as an action at any time during the game, they can take two of their pegs on two different cults and swap them. Um, so for example, say you have one peg on the eight step of water and you have another peg on the two step of air and this uh, round is an air reward. So you can spend one of your lamps and you can switch those pegs and all of a sudden you are at eight on air and you'll get the cult reward uh, if you stay there until the end of the round and only two on water. So you don't gain or lose any net, uh, you know, total cult steps by doing these swaps, but you can basically move them around to mainly maximize your cult rewards and then a little bit toward the end of the game sometimes maximize your scoring relative to the position of your opponent. So that's what the genie are all about. Um, uh, synergizing with this somewhat is their stronghold ability. Um, it's a four power production stronghold. Um, and when you pass after you've built the stronghold, you get one point for every priest that you have sent to a cult. Um, so pretty straightforward. Um, definitely a mid to late game stronghold. Once you've sent uh, some priests, this can just add some supplemental scoring. Um, and that's it. Otherwise, normal shipping, normal digging. Like this is a, a pretty basic uh, faction, uh, but the cult rewards are what, everything that uh, we have to do with the genie as we'll see as we get into sort of how to play them. Um, and these lamps and switching around, uh, really getting up high on at least one cult track and then maximizing that by swapping it around and getting all those juicy cult rewards is how the genie uh, propel themselves uh, through the game here. So with that in mind, when do we want to play the genie? Um, so I think that You'll see a lot of this here uh, has to do with the cults. Um, 
But let's talk about the bonus tiles really quick. I don't think bonus tiles are actually a huge impact on the Genie's game. So even these ones that I've got is good versus the ones that are bad. Like, I don't think they're, they can kind of play with any set of bonus tiles. But if you had to pick some, uh, I've laid out here that I think the, the spade bonus tile is very good for the Genie because they don't have any natural spades and they're a five seven faction so they struggle they, they struggle to get uh double dig out the gate the first iteration of the genie it's worth mentioning here actually had them starting as a zero twelve faction which gave them automatic immediate access to double dig they proved to be uh overpowered uh in that format and so they were adjusted down to five seven because we're still in beta testing, I'll note here, it's possible that this gets shifted again. It wouldn't shock me if Genie got bumped back up to 3-9. But for now, they're at 5-7, so that's how we'll talk about them. And in that iteration, spades are hard for them to come by. Um, they don't have any other natural way of getting them. So the spade bonus tile, uh, a good addition to the game for the Genie. I've also got cult coins here. Um, Genie, as we've already talked about, very culty focused faction. Sometimes one extra step can be a huge difference for them. Um, and so that cult coins tile is one that they like. Also the coins are just generally good for them. They're not, um, not a, a, a faction that's necessarily gonna thrive in low coin uh, setups. Although again, that's gonna depend a lot on the cult tracks. Uh, and then finally, Temp Ship. I have here as um, good for them because they like to send priests to cults. They like just to have priests in general, and we'll talk about more about that in a second. Um, but temp ship is basically a temporary alleviation of priests and coins, which are the two things the genie are kind of always wanting more of. Um, and so having that in the game, I think is good, especially allows them some early expansion. Um, to, to succeed, the genie needs to, to get some dwellings out. Um, that's kind of the hardest thing that, that they have to do. Um, and so Tempship can certainly help with that. On the other side, on the bad, the only one I've thrown down here is the TP scoring tile, just because the genie don't typically have a bunch of TPs sitting around and other factions are gonna take um, better advantage of this than them. But I don't think that, or really any other bonus tile set is a particularly make or break for the genie. Um, when we talk about the Factions, again, other factions in the game, again, we'll always say it, color wheel matters. Um, and on base map in particular, uh, if you're familiar with base map Terra Mystica, yellow and blue are the bestest of friends on base map. So if you are playing Genie, they're a yellow faction. They want to see that blue faction in the game, have that nice synergy on the western side of the map. Um, and that's, that's the absolute best thing to look for. Uh, as far as bad, I think red and yellow on base map are not so friendly brown, a little bit less so. Um, but what really with the genie, what I would want to avoid are other very cult focused factions, because that's going to create cult competition for those priest spots that you want both to get up on the cults and also to score that stronghold. And also then just ultimately the cult scoring at the end of the game. So factions like cultists, Orin, chaos magicians, um, among the fan factions, Enlightened, Atlanteans, some of these factions that like to send a lot of priests to cults, like to play culty, uh, that's what you don't want to see in the game as the genie. Um, if you're playing some nice engineers, prospectors, some of these factions that don't send a lot of priests to the cults, uh, that's when it's a much better setup. Um, and now let's talk about the track. So I think that of all the different sort of things that affect the setup, there are some factions for whom the bonus tiles are really important, some factions for whom the color neighbors are really important. I think for the genie, the track is the most important thing to have a good setup. And the number one thing that you want to look for is back to back, or at very least, repeat cult rewards. And this is because what you want to do as the genie is try to get up high on at least one cult as quickly as possible and then use those lamps to move around. But there are five rounds that give cult rewards, rounds one through five, and you only have three swaps. So that means that at least one movement is not going to be, you're not gonna have enough swaps to move everything around. And if you move, use all three of them to swap in like rounds one to four, then you won't have any swaps left over at the end to optimize your scoring. So, but if you have back-to-back uh, -back cult rewards where you basically swap to get up high on one and then you can just leave it there and get the cult reward two rounds in a row, uh, you save that lamp and you're able to fully maximize the cult rewards and maybe even scoring at the end. So if you have that town scoring, spade scoring back-to-back -back where you can double up on earth, that's amazing. If you have that um, earth, uh, sorry, air, uh, 
big building and air TP back to back. You get those workers and those spades without having to spend a lamp. Also amazing. And at the very least, have it as a repeat because sometimes you can leave one up and you'll swap another um, and, and you can still optimize the rewards that way. Um, so that's what I'm really looking for as the genie is thinking about how do, am I going to be able to efficiently use my lamps to really get as many spades, workers, coins out of this cult track as possible? Um, now, what happens in what rounds also does matter quite a bit. And in particular, I've highlighted a lot of the things that are good to look for as the genie. So we already mentioned that they need spades. And the best place for them to get spades as a cult faction is from the cult track. Um, and this is especially true early in the game. So my favorite thing to look for is the genie is spade rewards in round one or round two. So that's the two TP scoring tiles and the town scoring tiles. Honestly, it's not like you're going to blow out of the water scoring these. You might hit a couple on the TP rounds. Um, around one or two town is probably not doable for the genie, but honestly, those things are not that relevant. It's the cult reward that matters. Um, and if it's round two, like you should definitely be able to get to that eight spot and getting two spades uh, out of that cult reward. And even sometimes you can get to two, the eight spot and get two on round one. Um, so that's like the number one thing I'm looking for early in the game as the genie are spades. Through the mid game is when you start to want coins. Um, and this is true for many factions, but because the genie can really optimize uh, for the cult rewards, that spade scoring tile in round three or round four can be a really nice infusion of coins. You just swap over to that earth cult with one of your lamps um, and that can really uh, keep your economy humming. The temple scoring also in like round four or round five, because by that point you've probably sent a lot of priests to cults, especially if you're playing uh, a game where you want to build a stronghold in the middle of the game, that can also be a really nice infusion of coins at a really crucial point in the game. So those are really nice things to look for there. Um, and then as far as like actually hitting rounds for scoring, um, I think the, the big building tile in round four, round five to build that stronghold uh, and start generating points from the priest that you've sent to the Colts, that's kind of the sweet spot for that. We've talked about a couple other factions for whom that is the case. Um, they can also hit a round four dig round if they get some dwellings out early. Like I have seen dig advanced genie uh, be, be possible. Um, they're not as digging of a faction as like halflings, for example, but like they certainly can play that game in the right setup. Um, and then I, I threw a dwelling here on round six because uh, the way yellow is laid out on base map is there are a lot of these scattered yellows kind of toward the edges of the map that once you've kind of finished out your towns, upgraded your shipping, um, these hexes often are kind of undisturbed and you can spray out some extra dwellings at the end. So that late game dwelling scoring is nice. Also, the dwelling scoring being in round six, the dwelling scorings have the worst cult rewards, particularly the fire one that I show here is really bad and not very helpful. Um, if you have it in round six, the cult reward on that scoring tile becomes irrelevant. If you have it any earlier, then that's just so much worse for the genie than basically any other tile. Um, so the opposite of most everything I just said is what you see on the bad side, which in the late game is pretty flexible. I don't think there's anything, any one round tile or anything that's going to be really bad for them. But in round one or round two, having that dwelling scoring uh, with that fire cult reward is, is really bad. It just sets their economy back relative to what they'd have with anything else. And the other one that I've got here, um, which is a little bit maybe unintuitive, especially when I talk about openings in a second and mention double temple, is the temple opening. Uh, but the reason the temple scoring tile in round one is bad is two reasons. Number one is that the coin reward is not that good. Even if you get a priest of the cult in round one, that's only two coins. Um, and you're just not going to be able, uh, relative to the other cult rewards that are so important for uh, springing the, the genie economy at the beginning of the game, it's bad. And the other reason it's bad is that early temple scoring encourages other factions to build more temples or even the placement of factions into the game that want to build temples early. Um, and having lots of temples and priests in the game is bad for a faction who wants to own those cult rewards um, and have less competition on the cults. Um, so that early temple uh, scoring round often generates a game that uh, has resources in it that are bad for the genie in the form of lots of priests. Um, so that's the other reason I wouldn't want to see that. And speaking of priests, the one thing I just realized I, I didn't mention that I think is worth calling out here is I don't have the priest scoring tile in either the good or the bad section here. 
um, despite the fact that I already mentioned that I, the genie do like to generate a lot of priests. And so this is the logic here, is that the, whether or not you want the priest in the game as the genie depends on what seat you're in. Um, so if you are in a later seat in round one, like seat three or four, you probably want the priest tile in the game because then you have a good chance of getting it and getting the, the priest tile is probably, an, the, maybe besides the spade, the best bonus tile for the genie to get in round one. And sometimes it's actually better than the spade um, because you, as I said, we really want to focus on shooting up to the, as high as possible, at least the eight step on one single cult as quickly as possible because that's what's gonna allow us to use those lamps to move around and optimize the cult rewards. So you really want that priest in round one. Um, so if you're in a late seat and you can get the tile, great. But if you're in an early seat, it's actually better for you if the priest is not in the game because then you just take the first priest power action. I would say this is particularly true if you're in seat one, you can just take that priest power action. And if there's no priest tile, that means Guaranteed, no one else has a priest, and that's a better, a good way that you're going to make sure you get that round one cult reward. Um, so we'll cover this again uh, in a little bit. But uh, so that priest tile, it really depends on sort of what else is going on in the game, whether or not, like it is definitely in any given setup, good or bad for it to be there. But the other parameters of that setup actually impact uh, whether that's the case for the genie. Okay, so now we know when to play the genie. Let's talk about the map and some starting locations. So back to stars and circles. Uh, the star is on F3. That is the central spot. Uh, as we all know on base map, the center is where the action happens most of the time. And so this is a spot that I think 90% of games with the genie, you're probably going to want to start. You're likely to get neighbors. You're likely to get leech. Um, you have a couple hexes next to you that if you don't have color neighbors in the game, you may be able to expand uh, for, for a town. Uh, often it has to be a sanctuary town here in the middle, um, but that's still uh, very nice. Um, and so that's just a spot that you want to start on most of the time. The other ones are gonna depend on who else is in the game and where they place. Uh, D3 is my preferred one. The problem is um, if you don't have blue in the game, you probably won't get a neighbor. You might get black on C1, but most likely if you start, if there's no blue, you're not gonna get a neighbor. But if there is blue, you're pretty likely to get them on either D2 or E4, and then you're golden. So that's why we said on the last slide that like yellow and blue are really good friends. Um, they both really want each other in the, in the game because they both like this Western area in a way that the other factions don't. And so if they're both in the game, um, then they can synergize and blue wants this like D1, D2, C1 up to A3, A4. Yellow wants D3, E3, E2, B2, A5. Like these, these stretches just go together so well. Um, and so if blue's in the game, start on D3, make sure you get your blue neighbor on D2 or E4 and you'll really be in a good spot. Um, but if blue's not in the game and you don't think you're going to get neighbor over on D3, that's when I would start thinking about these other hexes, B4, E8, G4. And I think it just depends on, uh, what colors in the game and are you going to get neighbors and also what opening, if you want to go for double temple, you really want to start somewhere where you're going to have neighbors on both your spots. If you're not going for double temple and we'll talk about the openings in just a second, um, then maybe, uh, it's less important that you have a neighbor. Maybe D3 itself is okay. Um, G4, you know, if like black is in the game and Brown is not, and you think you can grab F5, that's a pretty nice, uh, starting spot. Connecting can be a little bit tricky, but often through the South is quite possible. Um, B4 is more of a disruptive spot. Like this is kind of a hard spot for yellow to build a town off of sometimes. Um, but maybe if red is in the game and you're worried about losing that spot as an important connection spot, um, that's a good one. E8 almost never will result in a town, but often if you have, um, gray, uh, or green in the game can be a good neighbor spot. So, um, that one you're just gonna have to play by ear. I think, especially if you're in an early seat, throw that first one on F3, uh, wait and see where everyone else places and then just try to find neighbors. Um, and think about where your expansion paths are going to be available to you um, and you'll work out pretty well. Okay, let's talk about opening. So we were alluding to them a little bit. So uh, Genie, obviously not a, a big building opening. That stronghold's not gonna do you any good uh, in round one. Uh, you kind of want to build it, as we said, if at all, in the mid game. And so I think the Genie are focused on some of the more standard temple dwelling openings 
most of the time. Uh, there are some other maps where yellow can uh, do a dwelling rush, which I actually think can work quite well for the genie, but uh, it's quite difficult on base maps, so I don't have it listed here. I think most normally, and especially priests are so important, you're gonna wanna build a temple and some dwellings um, or double temple. So as far as the temple and dwellings goes, pretty standard stuff here. You want the spade bonus tile, you want one of the power bonus tiles that will allow you to try to compete for, for double dig, or as the genie, as we mentioned, if the priest tile is available to you, grab that priest um, and, and make sure you grab that round one cult reward. Um, if you can get double dig, this is like the opening that I would probably prefer. I think as a 5-7 faction, it's also quite often quite difficult to get double dig. Um, and so I think my favorite opening for genie in a lot of spots is double temple. Um, and I think with double temple, it's really nice when you've got one of those spade early round cult rewards and you can get to the eight spot. Um, and with double temple, it's uh, usually very possible. You just kind of also need the priest. Um, so which power actions you take are going to depend a little bit on which bonus tile you get. Um, so if you get workers, you're looking for coins. If you get coins, you're looking for workers. And if you get a priest, you're looking for a little bit of both. Um, but you do start with a typical 15 coins and double temple costs 16 coins, assuming you have your two neighbors. So you can always just do a single conversion. Um, so the workers action really becomes um, the primary option there. But like, for example, if it is round one town scoring or what I would really call round one earth cult reward, you get your two initial spots, which you can put on earth. If you get a priest, you throw that to earth two, that gets you to five. You take earth two, um, as with a temple, um, that gets you to seven and your second temple can be earth one, uh, get your little scoring going, uh, and there's eight spot. You could also make that second one water two and use the cult step from water two. Or if you took the, uh, coins four coins and a cult step, and then maybe you spent, um, some power on a priest, uh, that's another way to get to that eight spot. So there's kind of lots of options with earth, uh, with air, it's a very similar, you just substitute air. Uh, air two for um, uh, earth two. And with water, uh, if the water cult reward is there, that's when you're probably looking at a water two opening um, can work quite well. One thing to think about here though, is I am mentioning like potentially taking a priest and then a power action and conversion, or I'm talking about taking a priest power action and another power action. That means you're gonna need a little bit of leech. So not only do you need that, you should be able to get it because you're by definition with double temple, you have two neighbors. Hopefully people are upgrading next to you, uh, but you gotta kind of gotta keep that in mind. Um, the other thing, other option, especially if you land on the big building tile um, is, and maybe you don't get the priest action uh, or someone else, else has a priest tile and they take the spot. Maybe you just go for the four spot on air, for example, two initial spots at air two and then go for double spade in round two. I think the key here when you're thinking about sort of what's happening, right, is if you open with two temples, um, you are gonna be looking to expand and build dwellings in round two. To do that, you need spades. Um, so you either want those to come from the cult rewards or you wanna be well positioned to take double spade in round two. Um, but the other reason double temple is so good for the genie is because they really need priests. Um, and so starting to produce two right off the bat is really, really helpful. Um, uh, sort of mentioned all of this, uh, these cult reward points as we were talking through that, but like almost always you're going to want to take a favor, whichever favor tile aligns with the, um, the cult steps, like they can use all of them, um, particularly earth two and air two are really great, uh, income favors. Um, but water, water two is also very playable as the genie, particularly if you open double temple and your other one is another, uh, econ scoring favor. Um, and that, that three spot is just so good because the faster you can get eight is really the sweet spot, right? Once you get to an eight spot on any cult, you can use your lamps in every subsequent round to basically fully maximize, um, those cult rewards. And so the faster you can get there, if you can get that three spot on whatever the round one cult reward is, then you're only three more spots away. Um, not to mention you're picking up the power, right? As you go, uh, up those steps. So, um, these are openings that are uh, very doable for the, the genie in a lot of spots that I think work really well, but that priest is like really, really crucial. If you don't get the priest for the round one cult reward, um, think about what the round two one is and whether or not you're gonna be trying to like push on your round one cult reward more and then swap or just build up straight on the, on the second one. So um, cult rewards, it's all about cult rewards and early spades are so good again for the genie. I just really wanna emphasize that point. Okay, 
Now we've opened, and let's just talk about a little bit about what you do with the g and &E as you go forward in the game. So we already talked about this first point, priests are huge. Um, and not only because you wanna send them to Colts, uh, you want to uh, then ultimately have them down to score that stronghold, but the thing is the genie also needs shipping. Um, yellow, as you see, if you go back to the map, right, has a lot of nice spots to be able to ship to. Two shipping, particularly through this center stretch, can open up a lot of hexes for you. Um, but when you want to send those priests to cults and you also want them to, uh, for shipping, like it's just a lot of priests that you need. So the more that you're generating, whether it's priest power actions, more temples, priest bonus tile, you want to get those as early as possible. Um, and they even can dig, but you need priests for that too, uh, to advance their digging. So get those priests. Um, the second one point that I'll point out is scoring can often kind of get forgotten as the genie, um, especially if you're focusing on cult rewards early with your favorite tiles, you're probably leaning toward the economics ones, which tend to have more um, steps, which 100% you should do. Like round one, take an economic scoring favor as the genie for sure. Like they're not a particularly economic faction besides the cult, like the cult rewards are their econ boost, but that's not going to be enough. Like you really need an economic favor tile too. But don't forget to build, if you didn't open double temple, build that second temple by the mid game. Make sure you get earth one or water one. Build that sanctuary um, because you can have this game where you're flying around, building stuff, maximizing all the core rewards and you turn around in like round four, round five, and you've got a nice setup and you're way behind on point scoring. Like I've definitely seen this happen with the genie. Um, and so just make sure you, you start thinking about it in the, in the mid game. The stronghold can also be a nice supplement for this, particularly if you're able to build it in like a round four stronghold scoring round. And then you can pass for somewhere in the range of four to six points uh, for each round for the rest of the game um, can also be a really nice uh, addition. But I think that uh, the hardest part about the genie in my mind is converting the they have a very specific path of this of the core rewards to finding that econ that requires a lot of focus and you need to be able to switch that over and then find enough points. Um, couple more like smaller tactics uh, is your lamp move is an action and you can do it obviously at any point within the round. Um, be careful about when you do that vis-a-vis um, -vis what other factions and your opponents are doing. So especially for example, um, if you're at the 10 spot of one, so one thing that's worth pointing out is um, you can swap factions if you're at the 10 spot and uh, obviously you have to have a town before you've gotten to the 10 spot. Um, it doesn't like need an extra key or anything like that, you can do it. But if someone else is on the 10 spot of, of the cult that you wanna swap to, you actually are not allowed to swap there at all. You can't go down to the nine, you just literally aren't allowed to. So if someone else is about to reach that 10 spot on the one you wanna to swap to, make sure you do it ahead of time. Um, or if you're gonna swap away from a 10 and you don't want someone else to like jump over you cause you're swapping a 10 and a nine or something like that, make sure you don't leave them an opening to do so. So just think about the timing of those uh, cult rewards. Also, sometimes you might wanna send the priest to the cult that you're currently on and then do the swap. And sometimes you might want the opposite. Sometimes you might want to do the swap and then send the priest to the cult that you've swapped to. So just think about the ordering of um, when you put the priest uh, versus uh, when you go up. And usually that ordering has to do with where you are relatively on the cults, how many open spots there are, um, et cetera. Like uh, if, a, if a cult's already full, for example, with priests, you probably want to try to do it before you do the swap. So then you can put one on where it is and then, and then move it over. Um, and then this last point is because of your ability to do the swaps, um, sometimes once you kind of get up on that initial cult and you're using that one to move around, look at the like round four or round five cult reward and think about, you know, hey, can I send two priests there in rounds two or three or something and get close to maximizing that cult reward now when other people aren't even really thinking about it yet? Um, and then by the time that comes around, I'll be ready for it and I don't have to use those priests on the more intermediate cult rewards because I'm, I can use my swaps to get there. Um, and that allow, that also will ultimately save you uh, a swap later in the game. So like for example, round five call it is fire 
worker rewards. No one else, there's no other fire rewards throughout the beginning of the game, so no one else is really thinking about it. In round two, think about throwing a preset three spot on fire and getting part of the way there, and then as you take maybe towns to give you cold steps, maybe cold steps on bonus tiles or water two, you can slowly inch up fire so that by the time that round five comes around, you're getting four or five workers from it, and you haven't missed any of the cult rewards in rounds two, three, four, because you've used your swaps uh, to hit those. So that's a, a good way to um, just hit something in a way that other people aren't going to be thinking about it. Um, and then finally, just as you're thinking about sort of where my point's going to come from is the genie. We already talked about their scoring. Um, network can be a little bit tricky for them. Um, sometimes on, on base map, if they get their shipping up early, they can claim a lot of yellows and they can be competitive. Um, but particularly if they have... Uh, color neighbors who are also interested in those yellows through the middle of the map, um, they can often have a lower footprint. Um, and so I wouldn't necessarily be counting on competing with your, you know, engineers uh, of the world in terms of network. Um, but you obviously want, <coughs> want to be scoring a lot of cult points. Um, uh, they can easily score 24, 28 cult points, uh, especially if they're able to get the two key town. Um, so that's kind of the end game scoring that you're probably looking most to optimize as the genie. This current iteration of them overall, I would say, are on the weaker side of the fan factions. I think that uh, it's possible the reduction of their starting power from 0 12 to 5 7 was a slight over uh, nerf. So we'll see exactly where they land, but in their current iteration, um, they're certainly playable. They can certainly be competitive, but I do think they're, you know, on the lower of the tiers, um, not the bottom, but the lower of the tiers. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about an auction, you know, give them a couple extra points relative to what you might think otherwise. Um, but don't let that discourage you from playing them. They are super fun. Hitting all those cult rewards uh, is a really satisfying thing when you, when you pull it off right. And they can certainly still uh, win games in the right setups as we've just talked about. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, Come find me on BGA. Tell me in the comments how your games with the genie go and go create some magic and we'll see you next time. All right. Bye for now.